Well, thank you for joining us, Kate and Dr. John. Uh, we're really excited to have you here to chat with us um, about our partnership. Um, for, for those of you don't, who don't know, we have Dr. Kate Clark. She's the Director of Undergrad for the ENVS Department at Western Colorado University. We thank also have, yeah, thank you. Thank you for joining. And we also have Dr. John Hausdorfer, who is the Dean of the School of Environment and Sustainability and also a co-founder co of Cold Harbor. Um, so I'd love to um, just chat about why, why the relationship between the School of Environment and Sustainability and Cold Harbor um, is important or, you know, what, what explain, help explain that to, to the folks at home. Go ahead, Kate. Sure, thanks. So I think of Cold Harbor as a place for students to expand their imaginations about what's possible. We think of it in a lot of ways as one of our outdoor classrooms, one of our most accessible, um, and one that our students visit a lot. It starts pretty early on in their experience in our undergrad program. Almost every ENVS 100 class over the years has visited Cold Harbor, and then many of them return and really dive into the land uh, as juniors and seniors, in some cases interning with our grad students either Master of Environmental Management students or MS in Ecology students. So it's a place for experimentation and communion. People come together to socialize and gather through Cold Harbor's array of events, uh, usually like this one as well. Well, I've been inspired by Cold Harbor Institute from the beginning, going back to the founding. I, I'll never forget sitting down and dreaming with the co-founders, Brooke Moran, uh, Butch Clark, the generous Butch Clark, and really visionary Luke Danielson, and the four of us really thinking through a new thing called a Master in Environmental Management program here at Western that was redefining graduate education in terms of, you know, instead of having a research thesis, we had projects for community organizations, and we thought, wow, we should also engage students in running a community organization. So the idea Originally for Cold Harbor, was it for it to be, of course, a community laboratory for regenerative living practices, you know, whether that's uh, watershed management or our habitat management or regenerative agriculture and grazing or green building and renewable energy and environmental education in a way that's culturally inclusive. All of these things we wanted to open up to the community to try and for size another way of living in the West we also wanted it to be a laboratory for masters in environmental management students to think through and experiment with how to run an organization, right? And so Cold Harbor is this really unique feature of you know, being run by uh, an executive director with a team of master's students doing projects and helping run the organization. And it's a really new kind of way to uh, approach a piece of land to run an organization and to run a master's program. So, you know, when you give to Cold Harbor, you're able to both give to the future vision of how to live in the West, but also free young people from debt and student loans and empower them through their education to become that next generation of leaders. Yeah, it's been amazing to work with both undergrad and graduate students. Um, uh, I mean, I was one of them. I was a grad student working with Cold Harbor, um, but it's just always so energizing to see the new ideas that they have and bring to the table, not only in things like land management and sustainable building and agriculture, but organizationally, it, um, it is always so fun to be like, how can our organization and our people also be regenerative and have those conversations with those students? So it's always um, just such a pleasure to, to host students, whether it's a day, a field trip, um, a guest lecture, um, or as fellows, and they're doing their master's projects with us. So it's, it's a wonderful relationship and partnership. Um, and I'd love to hear, you know, that we have some great, um, exciting new programs coming out of Western's undergrad um, with the cold or the Center for Cold Climate Food Security, but we also have some really great partnerships um, that have evolved out of just using the ranch as this learning laboratory. Um, I'd love to hear your point of view on that and some of the things going on there. Sure, I'll jump in there. Thanks, MJ. 
So as we've been talking about all the really big and exciting, sometimes transformative things that happen at Cold Harbor Institute, I also think of the peace that it provides a lot of our students. In what's especially a pretty wild and disruptive time, I'm seeing our students in pretty profound need of uh, peace and outdoor therapy. And one of the coolest things I've noticed, perhaps especially through Gold Harbor's partnership with Mountain Roots, is the way working on the land, working the, the garden plots in particular, have enriched our students outside the classroom, giving them peace of mind, tranquility, and connection when they really need it. Folks that struggle in a typical classroom environment, I've seen them thrive there. And they're not just learning how to grow food, they're also learning self-discipline. They're figuring out what they really want and what it's gonna take to stick it through and get there. Really hard work, both the drudgery and the imagination that it requires to organize an entire growing season. And I've been so inspired by that seeing what gardens and the landscape can do for our students has inspired me to work with Dr. John to form the Center for Cold Climate Food Security. And our long-term vision is to build the so-called massive passive out at Cold Harbor Institute. And this would be a very large passive solar powered greenhouse to help us extend the season and to make sure that what I see regularly happening in the summer, sometimes a 60 day growing season, can happen all year round for Cold Harbor and for our students. I'm really excited about that future. Well, and I also wanna mention, you know, Cold Harbor is under or connected with the Center for Mountain Transitions umbrella. And with the Center for Mountain Transitions, we try to give multi-scale access to mountain community problem solving. And, you know, as local as it gets is 350 acres, eight miles, from campus for thinking about mountain-based sustainable living. We, we, we scale up to an organization we have, you know, focused in the San Juans. We scale up to a network of mountain-based AmeriCorps VISTA projects, and we scale up to, you know, being a member of the United Nations Mountain Partnership, but Cold Harbor is really at the center of the Center for Mountain Transitions. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you both for being with us. Um, we appreciate your support, your partnership, um, and your time today to you know, explain a little bit more about what we're doing together to help build a more regenerative future. So thank you so much.